Hello everyone and welcome back, I am Mount Mikey, and today here on Mighty Gaming I wanted to share with others how I made something that's actually pretty neat for the overpowered community, again. If you don't know who Overpowered is, they make some really awesome and comfortable clothing and ship it straight to your house. I mean, their clothes are great, they, they fit great in the gym, they feel great, you can wear them while you're working out, even while you're gaming, I wear them while I'm gaming because they're, they're super comfortable. Uh, I even got a hat from, from, from them, and it, it's a pretty nice hat, I've worn it for quite a while, although my dog kind of chewed on it a little bit, so I can't really wear it anymore and it makes me mad. <clears throat> No, this isn't sponsored, and I know I'm droning on about it, but I honestly just really like their products. I swear. I mean, I really love it. Consider this an honest review. But anyways, they have a Discord where me and several other smaller content creators can chat with each other and connect with each other and, uh, you know, maybe set up collabs with each other and, and hang out. And it's been a blessing to be able to, like, talk with everybody and everything and, you know, meet new people. So I decided to make it my mission to give them free stuff as I practice my video design stuffs. You know, video editing, graphics design, like the in the last video, how I showed my Twitch alert that I made for everybody to just download for free, because why not? But it's really only gonna be available to overpowered ambassadors. But when I show you this today, you will learn how to make your own. Pretty, pretty, I, I say knowledge is more valuable. <laughs> so I am gonna be showing you how I made this. I'm gonna go through it kind of quick. This is gonna be considering you know how to use the software that I will be using today and how to add it to your OBS studio as well. Uh, the files will only be available for the overpowered community in their Discord. However, you will learn step-by-step step how to make your own using this free editing software, which is my favorite, it's called DaVinci Resolve. It's quite complicated, we will be using DaVinci Resolve for all of this, and as well as a file converter that you're going to need. You can pick any file converter out there in the world, but I have one that I showcase in this video that you can download for free and use, uh, but there's some things to watch out for, so you want to just, just watch the video. This isn't going to show you how to use DaVinci Resolve to its fullest, okay? This is just going to show you somewhat quickly how to create this stinger transition for your Twitch streams. So this is kind of geared towards people who know Resolve a little bit, but if you, if you can download it and understand video editing, then you can straight up just follow me step by step and understand what you're doing basically so you'll be good to go just do what i do so moving on into davinci resolve after creating a new project you will create a new timeline and make sure you edit the format to be 1920 by 1080p and also 60 frames per second and then create next you're going to make a fusion composition and make sure it is three seconds long that's what i like for a transition this all of this stuff that I'm about to tell you to make a transition, you of course can edit and choose how you want to make it, but this is specifically how I made the one that is now in the Overpowered Discord, the one that you just saw. This is just how I made this one, you can make yours however you want. Now you will go into the Fusion panel and you're going to add your media to the node area at the bottom. You can see it on screen. Um, you use whatever media you're using, I'm using the picture that I'm using, which is the Overpowered picture or the overpowered bear logo that they provided me, so I will be using that. Once added, you're going to add a transform node for that media, and then you're going to bring in a background node. Uh, you're going to customize it how you like, of course. The background node for me, the color is going to be white, because it's the one I'm going to need for the transition I'm making. By the way, you can set the viewers with those little dots under the nodes, and choose where you want your media to be seen, and you know that way you can organize your work. Um, so be sure to keep an eye on those if ever you can't see what's going on with what you're editing. Next, you're gonna create a merge node. You will merge the background uh, and the media transform together. Connect your background to the orange background input on the merge node, and then the media transform to the green foreground input. Now, put your merge node into the viewer so that you can see it all together. Mine is a little big in the viewer, so I made it just a little smaller and positioned it to my liking. You, of course, can do it how you want for yours. Now you're going to take your playhead and move it in about 45 frames, or wherever you like it, 
This will more than likely end up changing as you work on the project. Mine does here as well. You will see how I change it around later. Uh, when you're at 45 frames, set a keyframe for your media transform, then drag your playhead to the beginning and move the media down and out of frame. This will bring the icon from outside the frame and slide it up into frame. The animation is going to look a little odd at first, and that's because it's abruptly stopping and starting. We can smooth this out a bit by using the spline editor, which is up there in the corner. Uh, at the top of Resolve, there's a button that says spline. You will select the two keyframes we made in the spline editor that pops up, and once those are two selected, you're going to press S on your keyboard. You can smooth these out even more by using the handles created for each keyframe, like you see here in the video. Throughout the video, play with these to your liking. Usually an S curve with the keyframe line is what I use for this. Now we're going to create a transition mask. So you're going to get a rectangle mask and then a transform node. You will connect the rectangle node to the transform with the orange background input like you see here. Then you're going to add your transform node to one of your viewers. With this transform node, you will edit it so it fits the way that you're wanting to in the transition effect. For this example, I am just making a plain old rectangle, which will soon be animating as well. Uh, adjust the shape how you want it to look. I've done another one that was kind of an oval shaped. Uh, and now you will want to change your pivot point, which is right there on the screen, on the same transform shape that you just edited. It needs to be all the way to the left side of the rectangle here or relative to wherever you're making. So you want that middle of the green little X at the left edge if you're doing the rectangle, uh, and you, you can kind of just do the same for any other shape really that you're doing. We are now going to animate the rectangle to slide in, stop, and then slide out from right to left. So it's going to come in, stop, and then come out. This is another portion of the editing that you can play around with because this can get finicky. Select your transform node for the rectangle. Then bring your playhead to the beginning of the clip, which is zero frames. Then set a keyframe and move the shape outside the frame to the right. Then move forward with your playhead to 90 frames, or the middle of the clip. Then drag your shape as close to the middle as you can. This will be weird because of the offset that we have with the pivot point, so just eyeball it and make it look your best. Then finally bring your playhead all the way to the end of the clip and drag your shape out of frame, exit left. Now that you have these three keyframes for your shape sliding in, then back out, you can see them in the spline editor that we used earlier. So what we're going to do is we're going to smooth this out and also make the shape stop shortly in the middle of the video and then exit. So you can click on the keyframes and manually adjust the way that it's animated by grabbing the handles that pop up. This will help smooth it all out and create that stop that we want. You want to just kind of adjust it to where it looks like an S curve coming to a straight line to another S curve back up to the last one. Play around with this until you get what you like. By the way, you can hold control while grabbing the handle to make sure the other handle doesn't move. You'll notice this happens with the middle keyframe. So when you play it back, you should see the shape slide in left, stop shortly in the middle, and then slide out left. I realized that while the mask is in the middle, you don't get to see the first animation we made of the icon sliding from the bottom to the middle, because it's not timed correctly. So just tweak the animation we used for the icon sliding in from the bottom, and just move the keyframes towards where the shape stops around 90 frames. You can do this in the spline editor that you see on screen. Uh, this way, it can slide in while you still see it. Now that our animation is done for right now, we need to add our matte control node. You're going to take the transform output and put it into the garbage matte input, the dark gray input on the uh, track matte node. Then put your merge node output from your media into the background input on the track matte, so the orange one. Then pull your track mat node into the viewer by selecting one of the little dots. We're going to see that this looks a little backwards now, so to fix this, we're going to go into the garbage mat settings here on the inspector and invert it using this little checkbox. Now that it looks the way that it should, just make any refinements that you need to to your animation and keyframes. That way you make it look the way that you want it to do and make sure that it's refined as much as possible. Once you've gotten all that figured out, go back to the edit panel in Resolve. You're going to want to copy, so you can select the fusion composition. You're going to want to copy that with Control C, uh, and then you're going to move the playhead at the end, so that way you can paste Control V 
the fusion composition right next to it. So you have two of the same clip side by side. Now you're gonna go back into your fusion panel into Resolve, click clips at the top of the workspace. Now you can see both the clips that we have here at the bottom. The original should be on the left and the copy should be on the right. So you'll have one and two. In the copy, number two, remove the media stuff and the track mat node. You only want the shape, rectangle, and transform nodes. So literally just those two, as well as the media out. Move forward with your playhead to see the white rectangle in the middle of your viewer. You're essentially going to extend it to cover the whole right side of the viewer with white. Even if your transition color was not white, this part has to be white. This is how OBS will differentiate between scene A and scene B, because it's going to cut and this is scene A, this is scene B, or flip flop, either way. So to do this, you're just going to drag your X or your size to the right all the way. You want this to stay white when it's all done. Now to help with the whole scene A and B thing, you will now need to make a black background. This is going to go behind the white that we just made. So you're going to get a background node, make sure that it's black up here, and then merge the two elements with a merge node. The black is going to go to the orange background input, and the white is going to go to the green foreground input. One side should be white, so preferably the right side, and one side should be black, which is the left side. Now that you're sorta, sorta done, you want to go through and connect all of your stuff to the media out nodes, or else this won't work. This is how you finalize anything in Fusion when it comes to DaVinci Resolve. You always need to go to media out. So you're going to, just like you see on screen here, connect everything to the media out. Now you're going to go to the deliver page to render this out in individual clips. Be sure to click that individual clips. And you can see all this on screen. So for window users, use QuickTime, GoPro Cineform, RGB 16-bit, and then export alpha. You don't need to export any audio and be sure to make a file name and to check unique file names. And of course, choose an export location. For Mac users, it should be QuickTime, Apple ProRes, and then Apple ProRes 4444, and then the rest is the same. Once all this is set up, you will add it to the render queue and then render all. Okay, so now your render is finished, all right? Now, don't quit out of DaVinci Resolve yet because we're still using it for one more step. We're gonna need it. So real quick, the next step is easy. Just create another project. So go up there and create another project and then create a timeline in the project. But for this timeline, for this one, we will be setting the resolution to 3840 by 1080p and of course 60 frames per second. This is because we are going to put the two clips we just made side by side. Make sure that your white track mat is on the right when we do this. You can put these side by side by importing the media into Resolve uh, and then dragging them both into the timeline. Once they're both in the timeline, you will then change the X position for both of these to certain values. You can see on screen here, you're going to change the one for your white track mat to 960 and then your transitions X position to negative 960. So your transition should be on the left and your track mat should be on the right and they should be exactly side by side just like you see here. Now you're going to go render it again. So then this render will have the exact same settings except it's only going to need to be one single clip so you don't need individual clips. And you'll have to be absolutely certain to go into the advanced settings tab and make sure that data levels is set to full. If you do not set this data levels to full, you're gonna have an issue with your data and then OBS is gonna have problems with the opacity of your transition. Trust me, I did it the first time. It's not fun. So the reason we had to make this extra render is because OBS made it to where these two clips have to be side by side and you'll see what I'm talking about later. They can no longer be separate files. So OBS has a certain limit that it can handle and with this being side by side, it allows it to, I guess, transcode the file better. I don't know. I don't make the rules. <laughs> so before I continue with the last few steps to make this transition your very own, I wanted to say that I stream every weekend on Saturday and Sunday at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time live on Twitch and I upload here on this channel once or twice a week. I focus more on quality over quantity over here, you know, so that way, of course, you know, you get really good looking videos or at least the best good looking that I can make. So be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications for both the channels or at least this one. For this one, do it. Do it. Finally, all of the DaVinci Resolve stuff is done, but we're not. 
We now have to convert this side-by-side -side file that we just made into a WebM file. So the reason for this is because if we don't, then the transition will be not timed correctly, and if it goes over, it'll still flip-flop, and you don't want that. And if you do it that way, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. You have to make it a WebM file, that's how OBS handles it. I don't know if it's the same on Mac, I hear it might be different, but for here on Windows, make it a WebM file. Hell, just do it just to be safe. So anyways, OBS handles WebM better than .mov files, so I use Form Factory to do this. You don't have to use this one, it's just the one that I preferred, I just, it's real quick and easy to download and simple to use, and it works pretty well. So, you can install this on your computer if you want to, there will be a link in the description below if you want to use this one, there's tons of other softwares out there that you can use, I just... This, this one's just easier for me. I don't know. Be warned though, if you do download Format Factory, uh, just be sure to watch out for optional stuff that it tries to give you. And also, a Windows Protector might say, hey, uh, this is a potentially unwanted app. Just go ahead and make an exception for it. I did it. There's no viruses, I promise. It's just because it has the ability to change and edit files within your computer. So Windows flags it. That's really the only reason. Once your file is converted, however you did it, Continue over to OBS. This is the final step, the last stretch. You made it, good job, I'm proud of you. <laughs> so in your OBS, you're gonna go to your transitions down here to the drop down menu and you're gonna add Stinger. In this window, literally all you are going to do is just choose the WebM file with the little browse button. That is your transition now. So the newly converted file. And then check, use a track mat and be sure that same file side by side is selected. This is why you need the white track mat on the right earlier, because side by side it says it right there, the track mat's on the right. Now you're able to preview your transition and see how it turned out. I hope it turned out great for you, as great as it did for me, and it's, needless to say, was hella complicated. But hey, you made it. You were able to make one, and if you didn't make one, now you know how to make one. Now I know that was long and boring, but you now have the means to create your own transition in OBS, which is... Pretty cool if you ask me. And if you're one of my fellow ambassadors over in the Overpower Discord, you're welcome. <laughs> so I am super tired. I've been trying to hang up this green screen all night and this green screen's not working with me because I need to fix some of the lighting. And I've got this little dog here who's out of frame, a new proximity collar, and I still have yet to set that up and it's already a pain in the ass tonight. So anyways, a side note, next video is probably gonna be about Halo Infinite, so heads up. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am going to go to bed now. <laughs> I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.